In part one of this video, we talked about the reasons why you would hate living in Japan, which focused more on practical aspects, for example, moving to a new country, working, and etc. But we did not talk deeply about cultural aspects that you might find it difficult to adapt to. And no, I'm not gonna give you lame answers, like the toilet spray your butt too hard. Which Mr. Eats love. These cultural aspects that have developed over hundreds of years and have made Japan what it is today. The purpose of this video isn't to make you hate Japan or say Japan is such a bad country. We just want to make sure you have the full picture of this country, like good things and bad things. I asked Mr. Eats to share his experience from a non-Japanese point of view. Did somebody call me? Uh-uh! You only gonna get chips after you talk about some Japanese cultural aspect that some people will hate. Mm, okay. Now, in order for daily life in Japan to flow smoothly, a lot of people have a public face and a private face. This is called Hone Tatemae, and it's the first cultural aspect that I think a lot of you are really gonna struggle with here in Japan. Hone is your true feelings, your true desires, your private face. And Tatemae is how you act in front of maybe your boss or your coworkers or people you're not very close to your public face. This is such a huge part of Japanese culture and society, and it's impossible to separate them. Now this commercial sums up this whole concept perfectly. You're gonna come across hone tatemai a lot in your daily life, whether that's from your coworkers, your neighbors, or even your in-laws. They might tell you, yeah, sure, which is tatemai, but in their head, they're really thinking, no, I'd rather not, which is honne. And the hardest part about all of this is that you have to figure out what they're trying to say without them actually saying what they want to say. The goal of this is not to hurt and deceive someone. Instead, it's to be indirect. In a country like America, where we speak to each other in a very direct and clear manner, in Japan, it is completely the opposite. You want to speak in a very indirect manner. You don't want to say things clear and direct because that can be seen as aggressive and unpleasant. I remember one time I was a little late for work and when I got into the office, my coworker said, hey, are you okay? I've never seen you come in late, so I was just a little worried that something happened to you. But what he was really trying to say was, you are late, don't do that anymore. So when it comes to a lot of aspects in life, Japanese prefer to go about it the indirect way. Well, except when it comes to this. Kancho! And if you're a fan of Kancho, then make sure you pick up your own Kancho University shirt from our merch store. So you kind of have to be a detective, taking all these little clues and putting it together and trying to figure out exactly what somebody is trying to tell you. So if you're somebody that likes to be clear and direct with somebody and you like them to be frank with you as well, then that's probably gonna be one of the biggest issues that you're gonna be dealing with here in Japan. There's an old Japanese saying, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. So there's an immense social and cultural pressure for you to fit in. Not only that, but you must put the group's well-being above any individual's. This is illustrated really well in this fact. Japanese workers are more likely to use only half of their paid vacation time. Now, in a typical Japanese workplace, each worker carefully considers how their actions impact their team members and their coworkers. So if somebody takes a week's vacation, their job becomes a responsibility of the coworkers. So they just end up feeling like they're a burden on everybody around them in the workplace. Now, this kind of group thinking can be beneficial because if the group does well, then of course you do well. But the pendulum can swing back the other way because if you or someone in your group messes up, the whole group might get punished. In 2017, there were eight members of a high school baseball team in Sendai who were caught smoking and drinking several times on and off school grounds. And as a result, the whole baseball club was not allowed to practice for a whole month. The kids who did nothing but carry the equipment or the substitute players, they got punished from playing as well because of those kids' actions. And not only that, but the coaches of the baseball team themselves had to resign because 
because of what those eight students did. So this sort of group thinking permeates all aspects of Japanese society, from your work life, to your relationships, to even your family life. Now, right behind me is Gyeondori. Uh, this is a place that is well known as the Geisha District, the largest Geisha District in all of Japan. And speaking of Geisha, I want to talk about the role of women in Japanese society. Go back to the idea of 1950s America, where the idea of a good housewife was submissive, obedient, and stayed home to care for the kids. That's kind of how Japan still is. And I say kind of because women do have the freedom to choose their careers, but there is a lot of pressure from family, from friends, and from society in general for them to eventually have kids, stay at home and take care of them. But if that's not what they want to do, then they may be seen as a little odd or a little strange. And even if a woman does decide to dedicate her life to her career, there are still a couple of domestic tasks at the office that a woman is going to have to do, like making tea for a client or for their boss. And yes, unfortunately, there are still some guys out there who think it's okay to put their hands on a woman or to take inappropriate pictures of them out in public. Here's a poster that I saw recently at a train station that illustrates just that. Now, I want to make sure to clarify that it's not all Japanese men who are doing this, nor is it just a normal everyday occurrence. But there are a small handful of bad people out there who think it's okay, and it is a problem that women should be aware of. That's Yasaka Shrine right behind me. It was established in the year 656 AD. Now Japan is full of rich culture and ancient history, and that ancient history is also what affects the cultural mindset of many Japanese people. Now I mentioned earlier that Japanese people won't use all their vacation time at work because it is a burden on others, and that's just the way it is. And there are a lot of other opinions that a lot of Japanese people hold for seemingly no other reason than that's just the way it is. For example, shortly after arriving here, I learned about this thing called the Financial Independence Retire Early Movement. And it's basically the idea that while you're young, you work hard, save enough money so you can retire at an earlier age. So you have more time to spend doing the things that you love to do and spending it with the people that you love. But I wanted to share it with a lot of my Japanese coworkers and Japanese friends, and I was met with the same response. Why would you want to do that? you should work your whole life and then retire. That's just the way it is. So for some of you, this rigidity that some people have in thinking here may be difficult for you to deal with. If you yourself are an unconventional thinker, you might find it hard to make relationships with people who are open to new ideas like you are. What advice would you give to people about dealing with these cultural aspects? So it might be natural, I think, for a lot of people to start judging the culture like as good or bad because they're comparing it to what they know from back home. And of course, uh, there are some real bad parts about Japanese culture, like the um, women's issues that I talked about earlier. But there are a lot of good things in Japanese culture. And I think most cultural aspects here in Japan are not good, they're not bad, they're just different. If you can accept Japanese culture for what it is, rather than judging it or comparing it to other countries, you'll have a lot easier time uh, living here. There is a hidden benefit to being an outsider. Ooh. Japanese people are going to give you a little bit more leeway when it comes to following certain cultural aspects just because you're an outsider. Maybe you were supposed to bow, but you didn't bow. Most people won't hold it against you. They probably won't look at you and say, oh, he was so rude because he didn't bow. It takes a lot of pressure off of you, so you don't have to worry about looking perfect. And one thing I want to add is you can always, always ask Japanese people around you. In my country, we do this, but I don't know what I should do in the same situation in Japan. And then they understand, oh, okay, so you don't know how we do it in Japan. Let me explain. They are more than happy to explain for you. Japanese culture is centuries old. Mm -hmm. so. A lot of the thoughts and a lot of the way that people uh, interact here in Japan, that was developed over hundreds and thousands of years. And to really understand it, you have to go back into the past, look at its history, and when you understand its history, then you can understand how it's been changed to fit into this modern world that we're living in right now. So just to give you guys an idea of how ancient Japanese culture is, consider the fact that sake brewing was happening in the 8th century. It was done by priestesses of certain shrines and they would brew sake to offer to the gods. So we actually learned this fact from today's sponsor, Tipsy. Tipsy. 
Tipsy is a unique sake subscription box service where you can enjoy a wide variety of sake from all over Japan. They carefully curate each and every bottle so that you can experience the deep history and traditions of Japanese sake. And they're offering all of you a $20 discount on your own subscription. Just to use the special link and our code, Mrs. Eats. It's because of wonderful companies like Tipsy that we can continue to make videos and live stream about Japan. So if you're legal age to enjoy Japanese sake, definitely pick up your own subscription box from Tipsy. Your first Tipsy subscription box comes with six different 10 ounce bottles of sake, along with an amazing sake guide. Inside, you can learn the history of sake, how it's made, the many different types of sake, instructions on how to properly warm up your sake, and so much more. Today, we're gonna try Tozai Snow Maiden. Kanpai! Mmm, looks like a very sweet melon or honeydew flavor. This tozai goes really well with some meat. Wow, surprisingly good. Traditional sake brewing is dying art in Japan, so your tipsy subscription will help them keep alive. Not to mention you'll get to enjoy hard to find sake as well as keep our channel going. Save $20 on your subscription box using our special link and code Mrs. Eats and start your journey into Japanese sake with Tipsy. When I was walking home from the grocery store, I was carrying two big bags of groceries and it started to rain and there was this girl. She was a foreign girl and she came up next to me and she held the umbrella over my head and she asked me in Japanese, do you want me to walk with you? That never happens in Japan <laughs> and I was so shocked. She did that from the bottom of her heart and even though uh, it doesn't happen in Japan, people don't do that, mm -hmm. she still felt like this is something I want to do for somebody. So if there's some things that you want to continue to do because that's just the person that you are, uh, I don't think there's any harm in doing it. As long as it's something that's helpful to people, as mm -hmm. long as it's something kind and it's not uh, hurting them in any way, mm -hmm. I say why not? It's important to understand how Japanese people teach this to each other from a young age. And to be honest, they use some pretty crazy tricks to teach these kids these rules and these cultural aspects. And you can learn all about that in this video here. And if you haven't seen part one of this video, then you can watch that over here. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Okini. Okini.